Let's go over the solution to weekly math challenge 14. And this time we have the winner, Fanfly. And he said or she said, I think the answer is just 8. And the answer is indeed 8. A huge congratulations to Fanfly. Anyway, now let's actually try to answer this question like Fanfly did. Patricia wishes to evaluate this crazy expression, log base 2 of 3, and you're raising it to some power. You have another logarithm and you're raising it to another power. Another power all the way to raising log base 15 of 16 to i to the 14th power. And a very nice thing about this is that each i sub k is either 1 or 2. So if i sub 1 is 1, you can just ignore it. It's just going away. If i sub 2 is 2, you're squaring this logarithm. So we, we don't have to worry about log base 3 or 4 to the thousandth power or something crazy like that. Each i sub k is 1 or 2. Anyway, and how do we determine if it's 1 or 2? Well, they're telling us i sub k is equal to 2 if f of k plus 1 is non-positive. And non-positive means it is either 0 or negative because it is not positive is what they're telling us. So it can be 0 or it can be negative. Anyway, and when you plug in k plus 1 into f of x, this x cubed minus 10x squared plus 13x plus 24, if f of k plus 1 is non-positive, then i sub k is going to be 2. And obviously, if f sub k is if f sub k plus 1 is negative is positive, I should say, is positive. So if it's not non-positive, then i sub k has to be the only value that it can be if it's not 2 or 1. So we know these constraints and this thing is going to help us determine each value of i sub k. Anyway, to begin with, let's try to find where this expression is 0 or negative because that's going to help us determine which i sub k has to be 2. And one way of attempting that is to try to factor this expression. Because factoring usually helps you out when you're trying to determine the sign of a polynomial. And how can we factor it? Well, the, this doesn't look as easy. But if you look at it, you have 24 and you have the negative 10 and 13. And they, if, if, you, if this thing was positive 10, it adds up to 23, not 24. It adds up to 23. Another way of viewing it, if, if there was negative 10x squared, you just take negative 10 out of this and you flip the sign of plus 13, you're going to get negative 23. And this thing is almost canceling out with 24. So a natural thing to try out because these numbers, the sum of the middle two numbers is getting somewhat like 24 is to try f of negative 1 because negative 1 is going to flip around the signs and it's going to maybe help us cancel things out. And f of negative 1, f of negative 1, gets us negative 1 minus 10 minus 13 plus 24 and you can see that negative 10 minus 13 is negative 23 adding another minus 1 gets you negative 24 so you get 24 minus 24 or 0 so f of negative 1 is going to be 0 and that's telling us this polynomial can be written as x plus 1 times another polynomial. And the reason is because the, the, this entire f of x is 0 when you plug in negative 1. So one, you realize that when, if x is negative 1, you, when you plug negative 1 into this, you're going to get negative 1 plus 1 as one of those things you're multiplying, and that's 0, which allow the entire thing to be 0. So we're going to have factor of x plus 1. That's not a rigorous proof, but hopefully that's giving you some intuition. Uh, I may make a video of the rigorous proof of this theorem. It's called the factor theorem. If f of negative 1 is a 0, then x plus 1 has to be a factor. This thing is called factor theorem. I may make a video on that. Anyway, now what else do we have to multiply to x plus 1 to get f of x? Well, one way of doing it is to use long division. Another way is to use synthetic. And I think synthetic is easier in this case because you have a linear term. And using synthetic division, I'm not going to get in depth with this in this video because that's outside the scope. 
And anyway, you get x squared minus 11x plus 24 as the remaining factor. And you can factor this once again pretty easily as x minus 8 and x minus 3. I may make a video on synthetic division in the future too. Anyway, and that's telling us the zeros of these, this function is going to be negative 1, 8, and 3. And that's telling you this f of x is going something like this. That's negative 1, that's 3, that's 8. And our f of x, because it's a cubic function with positive leading coefficient, it's going to have end behavior, something like this. So that's how our cubic function is going to cross the x-axis. And that's also telling us that our function is non-positive, non-positive or zero or negative in between 3 and 8. Now we can also consider negative 1 and to the left. But since our i sub k values for our k is going to be 1, 2, 3, all the way to 14, we don't have to worry about negative 1 and negative 1 and below. We only have to care about between 3 and 8. So all we need to worry about is between 3 and 8. And realize because our f of x can be 0, you can also include 3 and 8. So including 3 and 8, so that's telling you, so that's telling you our k plus 1, our k plus 1, can be, our k plus 1 can be anything from 3 to 8, including 3 and 8. So it can be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And that's telling you the value of k. The value of k is going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Because when you add 1 to k, you should get k plus 1. So you should have this plus 1 relationship, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, all the way to 7 to 8. So we know the values of k that's going to cause this exponent to be 2. And let me try to rewrite this. So you have log base 2 of 3 and i sub 1. And let's look at this. So we have i sub k is equal to 2. So i sub 2, i sub 3, i sub 4, i sub 5, i sub 6, and i sub 7 is going to be, is going to be 2. And the rest, the rest is going to be 1 from what we found. So i sub 1 is going to be 1, so that's to the first power. Log base 3 of 4, well that's i sub 2 that's going to be equal to 2. So that's going to be equal to, you're raising it to second power. And log base 4 of 5 to the second power, and this continues all the way to, all the way till i sub 7. And i sub 7 is going to be log base 8 of 9 squared. And the reason it's log base 8 of 9 Realize that we have this relationship between the base and this, this subscript. When it's i sub 1, you have log base 2. When it's, when it's i sub 2, you have log base 3. When it's i sub 3, you have log base 4. So when you have i sub 7, it should be log base 8 because you're adding 1 to this subscript each time to get to the base of the logarithm. So we know that has to be 8. And now you're going to return to raising to first power. So log base 9 of 10 to the first power. And you're going to keep on multiplying this. Keep on multiplying this until log base 15 of 6, log base 15 of 16 to the first power. So how can we simplify this? Now to simplify this expression, I'm going to use the chain rule for logarithms. Let me write it down. So I'm going to utilize the chain rule for logarithms, not chain rule for calculus, although they are visually similar somewhat. <laughs> not, not calculus, I, I, wanted, I wanted to write logarithms. Logarithms, let me make sure I spell it right too. Chain rule for logarithms. And chain rule for logarithms tell you that log base a of b times log base b of a, not b of a, b of c, gets you log base a of c. And what this is telling you is that basically you can think of, you can think of this b and b as canceling out. Once you have b up top and b down below, they cancel out and they contract and you're going to get log base a of c as your final result. Now, if you guys want to see proof of it, you may see some i popping up around here. You can click on the side to go to my video where I introduce and prove chain rule for logarithms. Anyway, now let me assume that you guys know it to begin with or have watched the video now and let's continue this. So, what can we do? Well, we, uh, we can apply this chain rule 
from log base 3 of 4 all the way to log base 8 of 9. The, these 4s are gonna cancel out, these 5s are gonna cancel out, all the way to 8s cancelling out. So here you basically have log base 3 of 9, and you're squaring the entire thing, so you wanna square this expression too, and log base 3 of 9 is 2, 2 squared gets you 4. So this entire middle expression is 4, so this, this middle expression is 4. Now we gotta look at what the rest evaluates to. So we have log base 2 of 3 and this product here. Now let's use chain rule for logarithms for this. We can use we can do the same thing because 10s are gonna cancel out, 11s are gonna cancel out, all the way to 15s cancelling out. So here you're going to have log base 9 of 16. So let me write that down. So you have log base 9 of 16 and you also have log base 2 of 3. So our final answer is going to be 4. 4 comes from all of these middle things. And you have log base 2 of 3. And this entire thing, using chain rule, simplifies log base 9 of 16. And one thing you may realize is that log base 9 of 16 is same thing as log base 3 of 4. And let me prove that to you really fast. Let's say log base 9 of 16 is equal to x. That's telling you 9 to the x is 16, just by definition of switching between exponential and logarithmic form. And 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 4 squared, and you can cancel out these twos. So you have 3 to the x is equal to 4, also known as log base 3 of 4 is x. And our x was log base 9 of 16. So that's telling you log base 9 of 16 is x, log base 3 of 4 is x. So those two have to be the same to begin with. So we have, so we have 4 times as our final answer, log base 2 of 3 times log base 3 of 4, and once again we can apply the chain rule, these threes cancel out, you have 4 times log base 2 of 4, log base 2 of 4 is 2, so you have 4 times 2, also known as 8. So the answer to weekly math challenge 14 is simply 8.